afternoon and welcome to this episode of Perfect Health. We hope you had a fabulous weekend. I had a good one and so happy to be here this afternoon with Mannix, the main agronomist on the show. We just love to have Mannix on the show because, you know, whenever Mannix comes on, we know that, okay, when I just leave this place, I feel like I'm a farmer, eh? Like, <laughs> I feel like this very successful father because of, of the rich information that you're coming with. All right, so how was your weekend, Manix? Well, the weekend was okay. What did you yeah. get up to? Well, just uh, home watching TV. I know it's November, and most people, like, you know, we get to the end of the year, like, they are done. Yeah, but most importantly, working on some concept, you know. Not party yeah. after party. No. It's okay to party. It is. It is. It is. Once in a while. Ah, but right even the now, last time you came, you told me you were working. Yeah, right. Even the other week yeah, you were working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work, work is good. So when are we partying? Um, December. Ah. Okay, okay. December. <laughs> 24th is my birthday. Really? 24th is my birthday. Ah, those are bad manners. Then how do you expect us to get your Christmas presents and then... No, just, just, birthday. just before. Birthday present. Just one. 24th. Is Yo! <laughs> That's party. Yeah, we will definitely do that. All right, so today we're looking at something interesting. You know, Donna that is rich in these, you know, products that you can use for your crops. Uh, we have the green here. We have the K. We have the bio A. We also have the uh, the, the the DI grow green. Red. DI grow red. Yo, there are too many. You see, <laughs> we would get tongue tied there. Yeah. It's understandable. Donna that has so many products, guys. All right, so today we are looking at um, the use of these products in okra production. I love okra. I don't know what you call it, okra, derele, umulembwe. What do you call it? Mm, I, yours. Does it have a special name? We call it Idelele. <laughs> like Idelele makes it sound like yes, because it's that slimy. It's Idelele. Yes. <laughs> All right, and you, we know you know we love to have it like when we prepare it. Um, I like it like boiled and what? How do you like it? Fried. Oh, you have never tasted the fried one. Really? Yeah. That's very nice. Especially I've seen it before, but I always question the taste. Especially when you put it on your rice. <gasps> yes. They live on rice. On rice, yes. It's very nice. Very really, nice. producer, <laughs> the lele on rice? Right. No. Listen, <laughs> yeah. listen. You've got your piece of chicken there and your nicely done gravy. Yeah. And then you put your your your, your fried okra there. Ooh. It it must be a bit what's the name? Crunchy. Sorry? Yeah, crunchy mm. sort of, yeah. Mm. And then you mix it like that. Well, it's super. You? Yeah, it's very super. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I have I, to I, try I, that out. We we grew up as boys in our home uh, away from from that boiled of Why? Just tell us, no, it's not for boys. You'd be lazy. Why? It's for girls. Yes, because that's what she used to do. So we that you'd be lazy when you have a... <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> so I just started taking okra in the recent past day, like in the fried one only. Oh! Yeah. Oh wow! You know, for me, whenever I'm not feeling well, you know, it's that's what I feel like eating. Okay. Yes, whenever I'm not feeling well, I'm feeling a bit weak, or I'm just recovering from something, I always want for the day. You know, all right, so we're not looking at how to prepare it, but if you feel like sharing how you love to prepare it or how you love to have it, uh, well and good, you're more than welcome to share that with us. Otherwise, let's take a look at um, onion production or okra production. We looked at onion last week, so it's okra production sure. this Monday, all right? So, before we get into that, a bit about Dynalab Manix. Well. Again, Dynalab is a multi-level marketing company that deals with quite a wide range of products for use by humans as well as uh, for the fertilizers and products. Now, I, I know there's a lot involved in the production. I've, I've read up on this, you know, but uh, what are some of those, you know, conditions that are necessary for our crop production? Number one, good land selection. Okra does well in a place or a site which receives six to eight hours of sunlight. Six to eight hours of sunlight? Yeah. Okay. If you grow okra under big trees under shade, it will not do well. Mm. So it requires 
proper six to ten hours. No wonder mine didn't give up because I think I planted under an avocado tree. That yes, that's a challenge already. Okay. Yeah. So, look, good land selection is important. Number two, soils and climate. Uh, okra does well between the pH 5.5 to 7.0, um, meaning slightly acidic to neutral uh, pH would give okra a better performance. Mm. Okra doesn't like to be planted in a waterlogged place. You know, like in, in, in those clay soils mm-hmm. and perhaps uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's a slope and then you plant it down there and the water just collects around there, it will hold. Okay, okay it doesn't like that. It does well in temperature ranging range between 21 to 32 degrees. And uh, this is the most ideal uh, temperature for growing up. The other uh, thing to consider is uh, seed priming. You know, what I think a bit of time when you just plant it into a ground for it to get you must have experienced that you should plant it and then oh, you it took forever. It took forever. Yeah, so you can find it with DI protein. Put it in a solution of DI protein and five um five meals per liter of water. Meaning if you are planting two kgs of of you need two two liters for and for so how long do I keep it? I need a permanent. Okay. Yeah, you put it over and maybe plant it. Within a few days, it will come up. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Handling of uh, uh, as transplant. Mm. Okra is very, 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 uh, very delicate. Tiny. Yeah. So when you are not handling it properly, the, most of the plants will break and you will lose. So you don't want to lose your plants that you've invested your time, your, your power for irrigation, and perhaps uh, just your labor you are paying, and so forth. So handling and transplanting is very critical. The other thing that farmers need to look at is irrigation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okra must be given optimal levels of moisture when uh, during those particular times when you are growing. If you, you stuff the, the okra with, with enough moisture at the, both the growing phase and the flowering and also at, at, at fruit formation, uh, there's a likelihood that the yield will just just get lost. Right, so do we have different varieties? Yes, uh, the most prominent ones that uh, are on the market that uh, comes from um, spineless and Turkish spineless. Spineless? Spineless. So Okra has a spine. The Delele, that's not like so. The Delele has a spine, somebody. <laughs> oh no, yeah, so tell us, you know, I haven't even noticed that there's two types. The only mm-hmm. thing, okay, fine, I've noticed is there's the, the shorter ones and the in fact, we have, we have quite many varieties out there in the world. Ooh. In fact, even in a lot of countries, there are more than 20 in America, Britain, and so on. But here, we have only had two that have been uh, thriving in our conditions. And then, spineless, uh, terms of terms of spineless, and then, spineless. Okay. Alright, so anything else that you want to share with your varieties? Well, uh, these varieties can be grown anywhere mm-hmm. as long as they, they are grown within that pH range that I okay. talked about and so it's a uh, well drained mm-hmm. yeah, so it's well-drained. the same conditions yes, same conditions yeah. okay so uh, what is the best kind of plant for okra let's look at that as well uh, it can be grown in a drop spice a year generally in March and also August to December oh yeah. looks well yeah. for those conditions mm-hmm. before it gets to you see when we talk about general to March we also no, no, we are considering that maybe we have had rains beginning October, November, and by January rainfall is getting uh, getting erratic and almost going there. So, but then February also could be okay uh, mm-hmm. when there is any change in rainfall pattern. October can still be fine. So January to March, in between, and also August. Mm-hmm. Now let's look at the planting and maybe uh, seed rate per hectare. How do we go about it then? Well, planting can be done by directly sowing the seed um, and then perhaps uh, thinning up. Yeah. That's direct planting. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can plant and also in the field, direct in the field, and thin up. Thin out, to the sure. correct, what do you mean when you say thin out? To the correct spacing. Okay. Yeah. Because when, when you plant direct in the field, you, you, you don't mind about the spacing. But once they are out in the ground, they certainly maybe 10 to 15 centimeters then you start to be more space or you can raise the 
the seedlings of uh, okra in a seed bed, and then when they are they are ready for transplanting, we start transplanting. Okay. The only challenge with transplanting is the handling of transplanting. You know what? They're too delicate. They're too del delicate. So if you don't handle them properly, they'll start breaking and you lose most of the plants. Right. In terms of seed rate, 8 kg per hectare. 8 kg. It's sufficient. Yeah. Okay, nice one. So, which products here are we using? Do you know? All these products can be used on all. All of them? Yeah, for root development and vegetative growth, you can use, farmers can use deer growing and or deer growth as well. For the seed soaking as well. These products have more than 12 nutrients. Mm -hmm. you know, this one has three natural growth promoting hormones. <coughs> Just like this one. What's happening? <coughs> I saw that. Okay, uh, this deer grow green has uh, three natural growth promoting hormones mm -hmm. and also unique acid for soil amendment. The Diego Bio A has more than 12 nutrients. It has also uh, three promoting hormones as well as organic matter. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, this one has also three uh, microbes for mobilization of nutrients the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the soil. And so farmers can use either of the two for the root development and vegetative growth. At a rate of 5 mils per liter of water for the air growth screen and for the air growth of 10 mils per liter of water. Now, when the opera is about to, uh, when it's just getting to flower, you can use the air growth for the nascent of plants and the formation of the air Yeah. Um, the air cannot be left out. You know, there are these uh, worms that come in and they want to go into the fruit. They can begin to eat the tender uh, okra at the early stage. So, this one can be used directly to spray on the larvae as well as on the, on the leaves. Okay. Yeah. The other can work as a pesticide for some of the problems that come in the result of the pest that attack the worm. Farmers can mix Diagro K with Diagro Green. We can mix them up. Or Diagro K with Diagro A or Diagro K with Red. Okay. So when you may notice that they are paste on the crop and they want to spray Diagro 8 or Diagro Green as well as uh, the red one at flowering and, and fruiting, we can mix the two. The beauty is that uh, this product, the Diagro K, also has 32% of our nutrients. So while we're controlling, it will add also to the crop in terms of nutrition. You get up the red of this one and that one, so you find that the performance of the, of the crop will be, will be excellent. Interesting. All right, so what are some of the most important um, agronomic practices farmers, uh, farmers can do? Well, fertilization is one of them. Number two, consistent optimal uh, irrigation of the season. Aphids, 
a los más problemáticos de los stink bugs. Y uno de stink bugs. Stink bugs, they stink or something. Yes, oh. when, you, when you crush them, they are green. Some of them are green, others are brownish. And then also they call the other ones, and these ones they really go and they are the ones that attack the birds. Okay. Mm-hmm. And any products that one can use from Daniela to get those birds? Yeah, for corn earworm, they are the brain cake that we got for that. Okay. Yeah. But for aphids, yeah, we have to look for, for other uh, products out in the, in the agro shops because the agro does not, I mean, the agro K doesn't co- control piercing and sucking pests, but only chewing and biting. Yes. Okay. So, getting to the harvesting now, how long does that take? About nine weeks. Just nine weeks? Nine weeks. That's about six to three to seven to three. Expected yield back to the hectare of Walker? About 15 metric tons. That's not bad. That's bad, bro. It is. 15 metric tons per hectare. That's a lot. And the Zambians eat it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So a farmer that uh, uh, does a hectare will be happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. They can make a good money. So uh, Walker can actually sell better than men. That's it. Maize has a higher uh, cost of production per hectare, as well as this labor intensive and the all those political issues that come out of here. But okra is a good crop that the farmer can grow one hectare and can make a lot of money. So, what do you think you know, some farmers go wrong in order to get their production? What are some of those common mistakes that farmers make? Mistakes could, could start from the soil. If I'm a boy, I can have to have to make sure that the food is actually flat. 5.0 going down. It means that the soil is very acidic. And that is a slow response. Yeah. And this is a common problem for most of the small other farmers because uh, my realization is that they haven't done soil tests. And I don't really know how this can be done to help this family. <coughs> So Manix, what are some of those mistakes that farmers are making in okra production, you know? What are the common mistakes? Number one, I'll go back to pH. We said okra does well in the pH, in the soil with pH, 6.5%. Anything less than 5 means the soils are very acidic, the performance of the crop will be very poor, it will affect the yield. And so, the lack of having soils tested is a mistake. Mm-hmm. Farmers should know. Mm-hmm. They should mm-hmm. be soft. Number two, irrigation of okra doesn't need to be done overhead like on the leaves. It should be done right in the ground. When farmers spray, those farmers that use overhead to spray okra, what happens is that uh, the water that remains on the leaves, when it is very hot, acts like the and the get burned. Oh, yes. And so, okra shouldn't be irrigated from the And also, just basically, poor management around the practices such as irrigation, uh, weeding, poor yield, uh, weeding can affect uh, production of okra, uh, whereby competition happens and causes things that we already so there are some perhaps um, growing okra at the wrong time. That's because you feel like growing it now and so without really having an understanding of when to grow, to grow that can affect production of okra and perhaps also its market. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. That's all we had for today on this show, The Perfect Health Show. And on this episode, we were looking at okra production. Manix, anything else that you would love to add on before I let you go? Well, maybe I can say um, 
um, farmers can access uh, our products for use in uh, okra production from different points across the country. Um, we are in southern province, Livingston, like Monza and Choma, northern province, Kasama, and Mansa, eastern Chipata, western in Mongo, uh, northwestern in Solezi, in Kawe. We are also in Kipa and Dola, in the Kipa Belt. Here in Lusaka, the farmers can access our products at our uh, headquarters. Uh, in Rocks Park, we also call our road, road number 26, at our caves. Um, we are in more in Woodlands, the downtown shopping complex, and across on the western side of downtown, there is another house here, and also in the complex. Well, I know we love to eat it by try planting it if you can, and we can try planting it with the help of these wonderful um, products from Dynalab and the number to call? 0977 Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. Okra production, Delele, I think I'll be calling it that now. All right, so thank you so much. This has been the perfect health show. Every happy and profit-oriented farmer knows that bumper harvests come from a combination of workable solutions. We, as Dynalab International Zambia Limited, bring to you sustainable and cost-effective proven smart innovations of our time that seek to solve challenging equations of farming as a business. If you have been looking for products that significantly increase crop yields, reduce cold stress, enhance crop growth and productivity, enhance flowering and fruiting, improves crop immunity, depress soil bone diseases, prolong shelf life of vegetables, fruits and cut flowers, and improve soils, DI Grow Foliar Fertilizer speaks to all these and is all every farmer needs. For more details, contact The Agronomist on 0977 405531 or front office on 0211 or visit Dynalab main office at plot number 26, Joseph Muller Road, Roadsback, Lusaka. Achieve a bumper harvest with DI Grow.